Hi everyone, we're going old school today. It's a favourites video. Haven't done one in a long, long time. Might even be sort of a year or something like that. The other day I thought I really miss doing favourites. I miss having a place where I can just rave about amazing stuff that I've found over the course of the month. So I might bring them back. I'll be led by you. Do you like favourites videos? Do you not? Do you want them back? Let me know in the comments below. It seems to have come down to beauty and books in this video, which seems to have always been a bit of a theme. Oh, to be quite honest with you, most of my favourite things of the year have been house things, but I feel like I've done a few house videos, and so, again, if you want to see more of stuff like that, then let me know. But um, I feel like I've done that for the moment, and so I need to, to save stuff up again. But this room's actually been decorated now. I'm in my bedroom because we've got building work going on, and in my studio it's just, it's just too noisy. So I'm in my bedroom, we've redecorated it. It was all white when we moved in, and it just looked really grubby, and it was really cold and unwelcoming. And so um, I am a serial, indecisive house mover, stroke house decorator, and um, I'm never quite sure about stuff. However, I have to say with this paper, as soon as I saw it, I was just, Ugh. The lamps are from West Elm. Don't normally buy new stuff when it comes to lighting. I really like vintage um, lamps, but they popped up in the new section. I think I was looking at shelves um, and I just thought they're amazing. They do them in all white, so the glass bits here are white as well. Part of me feels like I should have got because they were very clean and crisp and very, very beautiful. Um, but I didn't, I went for the blush. Something to note with the blush is that the top two glass bits are different shades to the bottom and that doesn't really come across in the pictures online. However, I really like them and I, I feel that they look slightly more vintagey for being in the blush. But I'll link to them. I think, in fact, they might, they have to be a favorite. They're a favorite of the month. It'd be nice if you've got a choice of which color linen shade, because I think that I find white a little bit too woohoo. Um, but you know, they're fine and you can't, I mean, you could change them, but the thing is, I'll stick a photo in, they've got these really nice, all the fittings on it are really nice, they're brass or gold coloured metal, whatever that is, gold coloured metal. And so the top, the holder is all in gold as well and it's it's really lovely, it's really well finished. So it'd sort of be a shame to, to change that in a way. Anyway, so house stuff, house stuff has been in the favourites, I've been, I just love doing stuff with houses, so that would be a separate video. Uh, but on that note, a book. So this is the new Farrow and Ball recipes for decorating. I don't know whether I talked about how to decorate, which is one of my favourite decorating books ever. I just think it's so useful. Uh, it's not just about paint, but it's largely about paint and what kinds of tones and colours to, paint your house depending on how you like it to feel, uh, what type of house it is, you know, what kind of architecture it is, and uh, where the light's coming from. It's just really clever and really easy to understand. And if you're the type of person who doesn't know where to start with decorating, I think it's really hard choosing paint colours. Just get it. I read it from cover to cover in a night because I just, I, I was just sort of devouring it. I thought it was brilliant. They brought out a new book, which I have to say is slightly, it's like that thing of like, there's a bit of what's in the first one in the second one, but it doesn't bother me because when I finished the first one, I thought I could read that three times over with different types of stuff and I'd be so happy. So this is recipes for decorating. Um, it didn't come out that long ago. It has much of the same kind of guidance and solid information as the first one. But this one sets out colour schemes for you. So it will show you which colours work together and then it gives you a visual example and I think it's really, really clever. Oh, staying on books. We'll do books, shall we? This, now I have so many recipe books, it's just unreal. And every year I sort of have to do a cull because I tend to buy them and what I do is I sort of sit there when I'm eating a different meal and read about what I could make for the next meal, but then never actually cook anything. Um, so it tends to be just the very practical ones that I keep. For example, I keep all of the Jamie Oliver ones because I just find the recipes really easy. There's nothing like frilly about them. Um, and it 
they're quite adaptable so it gives me ideas for other meals I don't necessarily need to follow that recipe but I just think oh that might be nice to do an aubergine pasta with palm salmon on top for example so I do a curl every year because I have to otherwise there would be no room in the house for anything else other than recipe books however this I got this this is Ian Haste's new book and it's the seven day basket full disclaimer Ian Haste is a friend of mine um, but he's also incredibly talented, very, very hardworking, and a really bloody good cook. So I've been waiting for this to come out, and he's had this really clever idea um, that's great for busy people because it just means you can sort out your shopping on a Saturday or a Sunday or online, and you don't have to worry about dinners for the rest of the week. So it's the seven-day basket. It gives you the menu for the week ahead, okay? And then it gives you your shopping list, for the week ahead and then it gives you the recipes and there's loads and loads of variety in each week he's kind of themed the weeks so sometimes it's like a light week sometimes it's comfort food week for like chilly you know wintry days um but it's very very clever and all the recipes look incredible i've tried a couple they've been brilliant but i'm working my way through and that is rare for me so well done ian very very proud of you ian has got a great youtube channel and just cook stuff that you want to eat that is uncomplicated so i'll link to him below and to the book makeup thing quite possibly of the season although it's relatively new discovery for me so this is Glow Cherie from L'Oreal and it's a natural glow enhancer so you can put it on underneath your foundation you can tap it on over your foundation or you can use it alone now I do have to say that if you use this alone look, it's a really nice bouncy textured cream I wouldn't say it's got coverage but it's got a definite tint to it and then just a really beautiful glow but it's quite lightweight doesn't feel sort of cloying or heavy on the skin uh, it just feels beautiful and gives you this this sheen now what I would say is that if you use it alone just be careful on these areas that go a bit shiny because it can look slightly over the top shiny it's not like putting highlighter on all over your face by any means but it does it does do something and I will put it into a makeup video soon so I'm due to do a makeup video but you know you can just tap it on to refresh your makeup and give yourself a bit of extra glow but I quite like using mostly this but then with a dot of foundation in and it makes the foundation really lovely and sheer and it gives it a massive massive dose of glow I've been using I need to do a, an updated skincare routine video but I've been using this almost daily uh, it's the Ren Glow Daily Vitamin C gel cream and when I first started trying it at the beginning of the season I was swapping from very, very rich face creams, like buttery, on the verge of being lardy and greasy, because my skin felt so dry. Um, but as the summer has gone on, it's, it's not been so dry. And in the really warm weather, it tends to get a little bit greasy here, in fact. So I've been swapping to more gel formulas. Um, one of the things I want to show you, I can't find it anywhere and it's really, really annoying me and I need it for a different video and it's the Elizabeth Arden, the new 8 hour cream, great 8 SPF, I think it's SPF 35. It's so lightweight, you can't feel that you've got it on, probably not the best one for very dry skin but for everyone else, it's an incredible sunscreen and I've been wearing this underneath, again, light, um, when I first started trying it, it was such a shock from going from the very rich, almost greasy creams to this. I sort of put it aside at first and thought, that's not enough for me. But then as the weather got warmer, I started trying it more and more, and now I'm wearing it pretty much on a daily basis. So you've got your dose of vitamin C in there, which is great if you're gonna be out and about outdoors, because it gives your skin a bit of an added antioxidant boost. Um, and I find it easily enough hydrating to go underneath my SPF. This one I really, really like, but it's a lot more moisturizing than the Ren, and it's the Pixie Phenomenal Gel, and it says neutralizing moisturizer. I have no idea really why I need to neutralize my skin. I just think it's a really, really nice, very hydrating gel. Feels completely lightweight, but then it's almost, again, like you've glossed with something. 
So even dry skin will like this. And in fact, if you have dry skin, um, but you don't like the richness and heaviness of a, a very heavy, you know, greasy cream, then that might be worth a try. See how it works for you. Again, inexpensive. Inexpensive, so long as you understand the way that Beauty Pie works. I won't go into it. In fact, I will link to a post that I've done on Beauty Pie that sort of explains how their system works. But their skincare products are just absolutely spot on. And this um, Plantastic Apricot Butter Cleansing Balm, I think is one of the nicest cleansing balms I've used. It's up there with my luxury favourites, but it's not a luxury price. Smells slightly of apricot, but it's not overwhelming. It's just a beautiful texture, melts in really easily, gets off all your makeup, doesn't sting the eyes. Can't think of anything I don't like about it at all, which is pretty rare. Um, so yeah, go and check that one out. Matches my wallpaper look. Oh, this is an interesting one. Look, we're nearly there, don't worry. We're nearly at the end of the, uh, end of the road. This is New Wash by Hair Story. And it's basically a new way of washing your hair. It's not entirely new because people have been, it's sort of like co-washing where you wash it with a non-suffectant type shampoo and you don't use a conditioner. So it's sort of like shampoo and conditioner in one. Um, but I never really got on with any of the other co-washing shampoos. So what you do with it is it doesn't have any kind of foam in, it doesn't have any soaps in it and you wouldn't, a lot of people I can imagine are going, ah, I cannot imagine doing that. And I couldn't imagine using it either. But bear with me. So you wet your hair, you put it on, but it's more like a cream. So you, you don't really get any lather or anything from it, any give. And you really, really massage it in vigorously with your fingers, which I enjoy because it's like, it makes you do it and it, it feels really nice and it gets your scalp all sort of buzzing and lovely. And then... You keep on doing it, you can repeat if you like. You can't get very much shampoo out at a time because the nozzle is, it, it only dispenses a small amount, which I found frustrating. But then I realized that with my normal shampoos, I'm literally going like, doing a whole handful. And I'm probably using about, I don't know, eight times as much as I need to. So I realized how much product I was overusing anyway. And then when I rinsed this out, I thought, okay, Sort of feels like I haven't washed my hair. My hair was very greasy, I was on day five hair. Washed it out and I thought, oh my God, I'm not, I can't, I'm not using conditioner, my hair is gonna be like a bird's nest. But the weird thing was that it did feel like it had cleaned my hair. Um, and it felt like I had used conditioner. The ends didn't feel too dry. They didn't feel like I'd used a hair mask Let's not go over the top here. They didn't feel more conditioned than they normally do with the conditioner, but they felt okay. And my roots, I suppose, they didn't feel squeaky clean like you would get with a normal shampoo, but they felt like day two hair. And the thing that I liked about it is that my day two hair is my favorite hair. I don't like my freshly washed hair. I like the feeling of it being very clean, but it doesn't really perform very well for me. And so after a few times of using this, I'm starting to feel a bit like, okay, maybe this is actually working quite well for my hair. You know, I'm on day three now since my last wash and it doesn't feel greasy at the roots. It just, it's still just, it feels like it's perpetually at day two, like on an even keel. So rather than having that freshly washed, greasy, freshly washed, greasy, it just always sort of feels the same. Anyway, I need to try it a bit longer to give you a full report back. And there's a massive downside to this, and I keep checking to make sure I've actually got this right, but it seems to be £44 for a bottle like this. Now, I use massively less product than I would normally use, so maybe it evens itself out, but still it's like, <clears throat> I don't know, a bit, of a, a bit of a shock to the system, that one. So yeah, I'm going to report back and I will give you a full verdict on it. One last thing, hair thing, a bit of self-promotion. Um, so the Colab dry shampoo brand, which I'm a co-founder of, have launched due to more requests than we've ever had for anything else apart from miniatures, which watch this space. Um, we have launched a softly fragranced version of our dry shampoo. It has a very small amount of fragrance in. If you think about normal dry shampoo, um, I mean, I think, that the collab fragrances are beautiful 
Um, so I love wearing them and I love the fact I can still smell them a few days later when I'm just about to wash my hair. But this one, the fragrance doesn't linger so much. Um, and it's just there, it's just so much fainter than any of the other versions. It's called Dreamer. The packaging is beautiful and the smell is, how can I describe this? I would say it's a grown-up floral, light, fresh, you know, it's sort of like the smell of freshly washed linen and the most gorgeous light floral perfume. But soft, it's low key. So if you're looking for something that's grown up, that won't sort of fight too much with your perfume that you're wearing, this is for you. £3.49, can't go wrong, it's the bargain of the century. Proud of that one, proud of them all, but you know, it's nice when we bring out something that is based on uh, consumer feedback. So, those are my favourites for this month. Let me know if you want more favourites and I will come back next month with another one. Or if you want home favourites, or oh god, just tell me what to film. Please, because it makes my life so much easier. I um, hope that you've enjoyed it and I shall see you next time.